It's not the end of the day yet. It's kind of the middle of the day. It's three o'clock. And uh, I turned this thing around, put it this way. Alex washed it last night, did a nice job. So the body's clean enough for any 39 source video. Uh, the wheels still weren't, so I've been working on those. The other one will be easy to see. There's more light for the past uh, about two hours. And they're decent. I don't know if you know what they look like before. Maybe I'll post a picture if I'm not busy tomorrow when editing. Crazy busy. Uh, they're not perfect. There is some pitting in there. Um, they're not as smooth as mine are that have, you know, 10,000 miles on them. But they cleaned up a lot better than I thought. There's some minor curbing over here. Really, this is maybe the nicest one. Uh, from a distance, it looks great. It's shiny. The finish looks good. Over here, I think there's a little bit more curbing from here all the way down to here. Spot there, and then another quarter of it over here. Um, the paint's cracked, not the wheel. But kind of the same deal. Looks like I missed a spot. Decent. So the front ones are done. I wiped the tires off to their Michelin Pilot Sport all season threes. Manufactured the 35th and 36th week of 2015. There's seven 30 seconds of tread left on both tires. The rear wheels I haven't gotten to. This is just how Alex did yesterday uh, with the wash mitt. So I'll have to get in there probably tomorrow. My back already really hurts. And the back wheels are significantly more chewed up, more curbed. Um, and then some of that shadow line is flaking off down to the powder coat. So these are 100% genuine BMW style 65s. Looks like they just haven't been cleaned very well and whoever drove it uh, wasn't real careful with curbs, which is unfortunate, but they are genuine and they clean up a lot better than I thought. So that much is good. This one is better than the other one. The one I just showed you rear right was the worst one. These are 35th week of 2015 uh, Pilot Sport all season threes with uh, 430 seconds left. So not a ton of tread on them. Not quite at the wear bars yet, safe to drive a little bit or have some fun with them. So that's where we are with the wheels. Um, otherwise today, it's an uncut exhaust system, a very clean dry transmission, maybe uh, an oil pan gasket or something over there leaks, the bottom of the pan's a little bit wet. Um, everything's there, doesn't look like anything has been messed with, tampered with, replaced, no aftermarket. Um, you know, it currently has 93,000 miles on it, so most of the stuff is probably original, and it's in pretty decent shape. So that's nice to see. Um, chassis braces are there, there's zero rust on anything. It's been a California car for life. Anyhow, now I've got five errands to run. I've got to ship Jeff channel locks at USPS. I'm gonna get rid of those AFE air boxes, FedEx. Gotta go to Home Depot for um, bubble wrap and more towels. And I guess it's four. And the fourth place is a wash bay to wash, I guess not the alarm. A wash bay to wash uh, the belly pans from that car. It had both. Like, what are the odds of that, right? Um, so it's got both belly pan, like the transmission splash pan and the engine splash pan. And then I'm, I have mine off my M5 too since the radiator's out. So I'm gonna go to a wash bay where you put in like a couple bucks in the machine and uh, then you get a power washer. So we're gonna pressure wash those. So it's three o'clock, see how long this takes me in Escondido traffic. And yes, it is raining today. What, what does that mean? 52 minutes, we did USPS, FedEx, and the wash bay for the stuff. Now we're at the homeless depot and everything here is orange. Isn't it way too early for this shit? I'm not in pumpkin mood. It's just, it's, it's in pumpkins in San Diego, it just doesn't work for me. I have discovered manual mode. That is it. I looked at that and thought it might be, uh, I don't know. I mean, when I first got the car, I thought maybe it's like the ZF 8-speed and it's got a shifting ferocity setting. Not the case. That is how you shift. Like if you put it down in manual mode, see how the D is lit up in the bottom right? If I go down to manual mode, it's in sixth. If I want to go down to fourth, I have to press that twice. How ridiculous is that? It works pretty well. Like this automatic transmission is actually one of the better automatics I've ever driven. Um, it's a six speed automatic, but it rev matches. It shifts really quickly. If it's in like fifth and you increase throttle pressure by a half an inch, it actually is willing to downshift and accelerate. Most automatics are just trying to starve for fuel. Like it's a freaking Holocaust or something. So by the time I got back, it was about 4.30. So, eh, Escondido traffic. Um, I'm gonna put the car down 
and then we're gonna update the Mark IV, the Mark III, I mean, because it is still running, as I think I showed you yesterday, the old, I have to hold my hand here because I'm pressing this lever down, the old as shit software. So I'm gonna update it to V23, uh, version 23, not to be confused with V32 that runs on the Mark IV, but this will be V23, the latest available, I think it's, 3-1 slash 63 is the latest available uh, Mark III software. So we'll update to that, which I've never done before. I've actually never personally updated a Mark III computer before, so I hope I don't break it. Um, here it is. You can tell the Mark III because it's got no DVD logo. I just burned a CD with the software that I've already lost. Here it is. Put the side down. And I'm going to put it on a battery charger because I have no idea how old this battery is or what's been going on with it. Well, we're back in the computer. So why is that? Because I put the DVD or the, uh, what I thought was a CD in the Mark III and it read it and read it and made a bunch of noise and then spit it out and kept doing that. And I was like, what the hell's going on? So for years, I get like once a month, somebody tries to update uh, their system mark three or mark four or whatever and they say it spits the CD or the DVD out or it doesn't work or it boots up dead or whatever um, And it's just like you must not have followed my pretty well written very thorough Instructions that I specifically instruct people to follow verbatim exactly Verbatim and people don't and then they get bricked or they break so now I'm thinking to myself well shit are my instructions wrong for the mark three so I start looking at it and it turns out I wrote it to a damn DVD because I put the DVD in this case, this box packaging labeled CDR. Don't do things like that. Don't put DVDs in something that's labeled as a CD. So here we go. This one actually says CD on it. And uh, obviously it can't close the tray itself, so we have to close it and then hit OK. And I love the little sound that Image Burn plays when it's done verifying the disk. And I'm going to keep an eye on this progress bar here. Um, it shouldn't take long. And it plays this little sound that reminds me of a game that I played as a kid. Remember Arthur, the aardvark thing? I think he was. If you guys are 90s kids, you'll, you'll remember this maybe. And they had a series of computer games on CDs like Windows 2000. Maybe they would work in X and up to XP. But as a kid, I would play those games. And there was one that was like Deep Sea something. And when you found a treasure, it played a song that almost sounds exactly like what this is about to play. So I'll try not to miss it and we'll film it next. It was this and holy crap, it's on Amazon for 20 bucks for Mac and Windows. I'd love to read the system specs for that. It's Arthur's Computer Adventure from Living Books. Wow, I remember that. I thought it was so cool, graphics like that. Those were the only games I was into. Um, I still have that on a CD somewhere in Ohio. In fact, I know where it is in Ohio. Um, I wish they posted the the specs. Like, obviously, it's not going to run on Mac OS 10. Point, what are we on? 16, 15, 14, 10.16. It was probably like OS 9 compatible. Um, I'll see if I can find that somewhere without losing track of this. Isn't that a funky little sound to play when it's verified a, a CD burn? I just think that's funny. And it reminds me of this. So I found it on CNET. Um, Apple Mac OS 7.5 or later. Windows 95, Windows 98. Oh my god. I, I, I don't even know what Mac OS 7.5 is. I, I never used anything before 9. Um, I did use 95 and 98 as a kid. That's kind of what I learned computers on. Um, wow. I wish they gave like how many kilobytes of RAM do you need to run that thing? That's great. I'm going to have to dig that up at home next time I'm in Ohio and show you guys. Anyways, let's go out and see if we can update the Mark III with this. I apologize for the dings. It's the way it is. The door has to be open during the update. But let's say goodbye to the 1990 version of this UI. I know it's like circa 2000, but I mean, this has never been updated, I'm pretty sure. This is version 3.1.20, which I'll look up the release date on in a minute, but this is what everything looked like. And if I remember right, the other color option 
That feature I love, day night mode was so nice. When you flip the lights on, the map, look at that, it automatically dims to a darker color and the map background would turn black. And why they did away with that on the Mark IV, I'll never know. That's color three. Color two just looks like super faded out. The screen looks broken. And then color one, oh God, what were they thinking? Look at that. This hideous like sapia and orange. Uh, the only usable one here is this one. Getting in a car and a lift is not easy. Now I'll be very curious if uh, if I need a key CD for this because the guy that I had, I think his name Todd Walker, um, did a video for E39 Source years ago doing this on his 01 and a Mark III and um, it got to the end and it booted up and, and it was just a black screen and it said something like insert key CD. And um, it took me a while to figure out that some Mark III's need a key CD and some don't. I hope it doesn't because then I have to go waste another CD and burn another file that I have that I, I've never personally tested, but it should work. So I'll report back and we'll see what it does after this. All right, I was on the phone there for a few minutes so I couldn't talk, but... Um, this disc worked, then it asked for a key CD. I went in and made that, took like five seconds to burn. This is a 700 megabyte CD. Can you tell where the data is? Used about three megabytes on it, but whatever, it worked. You put that in, it reads it for a second, it spits it out, it reboots, and, uh, and, and you're back in business. You got the latest running here on the uh, Mark III. Close that door, I'm so sick of the dinging. I coated that off on my car, by the way. I went into the IKE, and uh, turned off, I don't know if I told you this last week or not, but I turned off the key and ignition lock chime. Thank God, I don't know why I didn't do that five years ago. It's the most annoying thing ever. Whenever the door is open, it just bongs at you. And with all the diagnosing work and coding and scanning and blue bus stuff that I do, um, it's just horribly annoying. So this is what we get now, 3-1 slash 65. I thought it was gonna say 63, but this says 65. Um, the Mark III is notably slower than the Mark IV. The Mark IV, you can buzz through these menus all day. It's really quick. Um, that's the other color mode. I've actually never used this version of the software that I've had available on my website for who knows how long, quite a while. Did I miss the memo? Oh, it's down here. Oh, it doesn't work because the clock isn't set. That's why. I put the old disk back in. Will it remember the address book after you update? There's a good question. Will it retrieve an address? It retrieved way more addresses than it did yesterday. In fact, I have to blur this because his home address is on here. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot more information here. God, this interface is so much better. Yes, split view on, or I have split view on. Emergency is here. Cool. All right. Well, that is ready to be sold. Anybody want a Mark III? I'm gonna wrap up today. It's just about eight o'clock. Um, I found the other airbox in the trunk, undamaged. So that's cool. Uh, these are all the parts that have been taken off, and some of them are cleaned. Some of them, most of them, haven't been. Uh, but they're all usable and sellable, with the exception of that headlight, and probably that one. Uh, but we got some maps, a UC sensor, uh, lower front grille, all this stuff. Uh, cleaned these up today. They didn't, you know, they're not perfect. They'll still get your hands dirty if you touch them, but there's not just like oil dripping out of them anymore. So that's nice. Both of those are ready to go. Uh, sucks that the door is missing. It's $100 today on ECS, $111 on FCP Euro for a plastic door. Um, took the battery cover off. I've been charging. This one says 10 slash 17. I assume that to mean the 10th month of 2017. So it's not too old. Uh, we're just going to charge it up. We'll be kind to it. Um, I have not looked under here. Let's see if we get a pump. Hell yeah, we get a pump. Check that out. We get a pump and that's it. So, oh, and a cargo net. Oh, that's cool. The old style cargo net. With spider webs on it. Ew. That's been in there for a long time. Anybody want a cargo net? I'm sure it'll stretch out and be fine again. It's just been sitting down there. That's kind of one of the cool things about dismantling a car is you find all this old stuff that's just been sitting here forever. Some of it's just like a cool little treasure hunt. I got the uh, other two wheels cleaned up. I guess I had a second wind. 
Um, this one's actually pretty nice. It cleaned up better than most of the rest of them. Doesn't have too much curbing. The finish that is um, here and not flaking off, this is really the only flaking, um, but it's in surprisingly good condition for as dirty as these wheels were when they came in. So those are cleaned. I scraped all the crap off the windows, all that writing that they do that, that they do at the, at the lawn or the yard. And then uh, we'll get to this tomorrow. I gotta go home and get some dinner. Something annoying about the Impala, it has super flimsy door brakes. So if you open it up a little bit too hard and it hits it, it just shuts itself pretty much. Now I helped it there a little bit, but if you kind of pull it open, I did not touch the door that time. It doesn't fall into its positions very well. If you're on any sort of a hill, it won't stay open and then it falls and it's really annoying. Look at that. Okay, 9.55, we're gonna wrap up today. I just filmed a two minute clip that wasn't actually recording, so we're gonna try this again. Um, super, super busy, productive day today. We did a little bit of everything. We got those wheels done, we updated the nav computer, we swapped hardware, we sold stuff, we did invoices, we went shopping, we cleaned up those belly pans, um, organized and labeled more parts. It, it was incredibly productive. We just did a lot on all fronts, which is great. Um, shipped some stuff, did some invoices, I got back late. And uh, I had a pizza for dinner, just sat inside and updated invoices and the spreadsheets. And that's kind of the, the last work that I do in the day because I can do that anywhere. I don't have to do that up in Escondido. I can come home and do that. Um, so it rained today, that's finally over. It's like 70 degrees and beautiful out right now. I think tomorrow's supposed to be partly cloudy or something a little bit more pleasant. Um, tomorrow's gonna be a day of waiting around the house for a little bit, waiting for FedEx to arrive. My radiator and hardware and, and associated parts are supposed to arrive tomorrow. Uh, I'll probably hang out here until 12.30 or 1. If those parts arrive, that's fantastic. I'll take them up there, install them, and have my car back. If they don't, that's going to happen over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday sometime, depending on what time looks like. Um, here in the meantime, I'm going to go inside and get some rest, uh, some early rest tonight, and then uh, hit it again hard tomorrow. So I've got to film a uh, upcoming things. I've got to film a video on this new car, car number four, a car. Get that up on E39 source, start selling parts. Um, Alex is chomping at the bit to come in and start taking the thing apart, so that's great. And uh, then we bring the next one in. So, talk to you guys tomorrow on Friday. Good night.